Okay, so this kind of situation is sometimes called a ballistic pendulum. And uh, the idea here is that we've got some kind of object. And we're going to shoot it with a bullet, some kind of projectile. And then we're going to see how how far up this thing swings. Okay, and um, that's sort of a, perhaps an old fashioned way to try to get the uh, velocity of a bullet. Uh, that was coming out of a gun or something like that. All right. In the days before we had better technology using Doppler effects and uh, and that sort of thing with radar. Okay. So um, what we've got here then is I went ahead and worked out there what the moment of inertia for the target is, which is that disc. Okay. And um, let me just point out a couple of things. Nothing new here. Just um, we've got our geometry term and then we've got our offset term. And what you have to remember about the offset is it's offset. The two meters is not to the center of mass. It's to the top of the disk. Okay. Sort of like that. So a little bit tricky like that. Now, let me see if I can make this a little bit smaller. And I'm going to kind of put it out of the way here. So if you wanted to look at that more closely, you can go back and pause the video and hopefully you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so these are rotation collisions, all right? So we've got the moment of inertia of our target object. Um, we're gonna need another thing. What's our other thing? Well, the other thing is the bullet. So how do we come up with the moment of inertia for a bullet? Well, uh, we could do it different ways, okay? And, but what we're going to do is we're just going to, oops, we're going to come in here and say, well, if the bullet is is embedded in this thing, okay, which is which is okay, it's, it's okay to to say that, and the shape, the size of the bullet is negligible, so we don't have to work with the geometry term. Then all we have really to deal with here for our moment of inertia is we can write that the moment of inertia for a bullet is just going to be the m mass of the bullet d squared, where now d is also 2 meters down plus another 0.4. So that becomes 2.4. And uh, so our mass of our bullet is pretty small. It's 10 grams. And we got 2.4 squared there and um, so that gives us a moment of inertia for a bullet of a pretty small value 0.0576 just like that okay so now i've got my two objects and i'm ready to to collide them and uh, to do that we're going to do it just like we did in the last one which is to say we'll use conservation of angular momentum we're going to come up here and say that the initial angular momentum has to be equal to the final angular momentum. All right. So our target doesn't have any momentum. So I'm not going to bother to write that one down, that I omega is omega zero. But we do have momentum for a bullet. Okay. And um, so what we can do for that is, uh, hang on just a second, I have a technical problem. Okay, so we're gonna write um, I omega for the bullet. So we're gonna have here, we're gonna have I for the bullet, omega for the bullet, and they're gonna be together. So we combine the inertial terms. So we have I B plus uh, the target, which I call disk I sub D, and then there's their combined omega values right there. So uh, this means we're going to need some kind of an omega value for our bullet, and um, so we're, we're going to sort of treat it like one of these deals where uh, as if the bullet were passing through here, and we've got some distance here, and we know that the bullet's going 800 meters per second right there. And so we would say that that number 800, the tangential velocity for a bullet would be equal to omega of the bullet 
times D. Okay, and D is that 2.4 number, the 2 down and 0.4 more. So then we've got omega for a bullet works out to be pretty high. But it's moving at 800 meters per second. So that makes sense. Okay. Oh, I don't know why I made omega squared there. We need to we need to fix that. That is not omega squared. I guess I had energy on my mind. We're going to be doing energy pretty soon. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and get our combined omega value, which is our initial. And we're going to have I of the bullet divided by I bullet plus I of the disk. And when you plug all of those numbers in, what you're going to get for our combined omega value is pretty slow, but that makes sense because the disk is so much more massive, 65, 62. I mean, just look at this ratio here, okay? That and that, you know, uh, IB is almost negligible, <laughs> almost, almost, okay, compared to the other one, but it obviously has some effect there, okay? So that would be the angular velocity there, but our real goal here is to fig try to figure out what's the angle that this thing pops up to, okay? I guess it would be this way from your perspective. What angle are we going to hit when we do that? Okay. And so now we've got to change to our other bag of tricks. And we got to think about what's happening with the energy. Okay. So that gets us back to our uh, friendly neighborhood energy equation. Okay. It's our first law of thermodynamics there. And, um, so when we when we look at this thing, what we're going to have is we're going to have one half, the combined moment of inertia, the combined angular velocity squared, and that's going to be minus mg delta y, and we're going to deal with we're going to use gravity as a potential energy term rather than a work term, and so we got no work going on in our particular situation. Okay, so if we do some uh, do some algebra on this thing, rearrange just a little bit, turns out delta y is going to turn into ic omega c squared over 2mg, okay? Now our combined ic value um, is our i... ID plus I of the bullet. And then our we got our omega C squared number over two M. And that's the combined mass. So it's the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the disc. Okay. Now they they really did us a solid favor there by having the bullet hit the center of mass of the disk. That way, the two centers of masses of our objects are, are on right on top of one another. If our bullet had come in a little bit low, okay, then we would have to, to do this energy part, we would have to determine the new center of mass for this object. Because when we do our delta y, it's that center of mass displacement, okay? So if they were offset, Got to find a new center of mass. But since they're aligned, psh, no problem. So they, they helped us out there. Now, when you uh, put in your numbers on this thing, what you're going to get for delta y is 1282. Okay, so almost, almost 13 centimeters. Woo! Okay, just like that. Um, Okay, and, but then it wants to convert that into an angular displacement. Okay, so let me draw back here on my original drawing, erase 
a little bit right here. Give you an idea of what we're talking about. So now this whole thing is up here. Oops. I had to, I had to turn out through it. Okay, this whole thing is up here. Sort of like that. So I've got some positive upward motion there for my delta y. Okay, and what we need is we need this angle right in here. Okay, so we got to do a little bit of trigonometry. All right, I know that from here, the center back here, that's 2.4. And I know this little gap in here is my delta y. So that means this side of my triangle is going to be 2.4 minus the amount that I've gone up into the air. Okay. And um, so if we line out our trigonometry, then we could say that the cosine of the angle of interest is going to be the adjacent side, which is 2.4 minus our, um, our motion, and then divided by the hypotenuse, which is still 2.4, okay? And when you work through all that, what you're going to get is that theta is equal to 18.81 degrees, okay? So there we have it, okay? And um, I don't know, I may have to look up history of ballistic pendula and see if I can find some more information. If I find a cool video or something, I'll put it in there for you. Uh, did you check out the video with the cat and the other angular momentum stuff? You should look at that on eLearn. Okay, pretty cool videos. That's it for that one. Let's just do, we'll do one more video.